the product is put in the exact space that the guest is going to be trying that. And in many times, um, they sort of build those, those really good relationships um, with the brand over time. And we see that converting to a lot of purchasing. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Event Speak with me, Big John, CEO of Beyond Experiential. Today's guest is Justin Miller, an entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Showplace. Justin, thanks so much for joining us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. This is a lot of fun. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I we were chatting off camera here a second ago. How is, uh, how's the weather up there in San Mateo? It's not boiling like it is here in uh, Los Angeles, is it? Probably in the mid 80s, which is pretty hot for <laughs> mid 80s. It's like winter here. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Justin, tell me a little bit about yourself and what Showplace is and why people should know about it. Absolutely. So the story of Showplace actually starts in 2013. Um, so I had started a company called Pillow, which was in the short-term rental, the Airbnb rental management um, industry. And we grew that business to manage about 800 homes. And we ended up managing over 35,000 short-term rental reservations. Wow. And in 2018, we were fortunate enough that we got acquired by Expedia Group. And so when I set out in early 2019 to start Showplace, it was very much uh, an extension of a lot of the learnings that I had had uh, being a Airbnb manager. And so what we've done at Showplace is that we've built a marketplace that connects amazing brands with the top vacation rental Airbnb hosts across the country. And we've done something pretty interesting and new, which is what we work through the term of experiential sampling. And so the concept is you can place your product in these top Airbnb homes and then guests who are there on vacation, they're in discovery mode, they're going to try your product, build a really great affinity for your product while they're on vacation, and then hopefully after they try, they're going to buy. Okay, very interesting. So walk me through the process a little bit. So let's say I'm renting an Airbnb property uh, that is one of your clients. Uh, is there signage? How do I know that this product that has been placed, say, for example, maybe it's some sort of body wash or something, how do I know that that is a product placement and where do I find out more about that product if I like it? Absolutely. So we view our Airbnb hosts that we partner with as exactly that as partners. And we've created what we call a My Show Place page. And this is, think of it as a Shopify page, but for each Airbnb host that we work with. And so they will put out both physical uh, marketing next to the product, like, hey, uh, you're sleeping on a Muse mattress. And for more information, scan this QR code and you can get more information. Um, and then also the digital angle where that entire page is sort of a catalog uh, of all the products in the home. And so ah, guests, find, gotcha. guests find a lot of value both, uh, both in physical and in digital. Sure. So, for example, you know, I mean, consumerism at its best if you're at this place and you now are aware that there's uh, these products that are placed and show play, uh, showcased, um, you can, oh, what else do they have here kind of a thing and sort of dig into it, yeah? Exactly, you know, I, I think the long-term vision for us is that we see the Airbnb spaces as a new opportunity for people to engage with products through sampling. 
And it's a really unique time, obviously, right now with COVID. You know, there's no, there's not very many events happening. And so the last three months for us have actually been extremely good because we've been able to capture a lot of that sampling interest that usually happens in events um, with Airbnb homes. Because Airbnb, if, I'm not sure if you know this, Airbnb um, since June of 2020 has seen a full rebound in traffic. And no one, no one is traveling and staying in hotels anymore, but they are staying locally at Airbnb homes. So anyway, so that's, that's a little bit about how we've sort of had some tailwinds over the last couple of weeks. Wow, talk about, in a, in a sense, you know, uh, almost serendipitous because, you know, obviously COVID-19 life in America has shut down the event industry overall. And while there are some squeaks and little noises of it starting to come back to life, you guys really, it seems like it would be kind of ideal because you're traveling either by yourself or maybe with your family, uh, you're in a, you're in a uh, Airbnb home, and now you're still having this opportunity to experience these different products that Showplace is uh, his place there. Um, now, let's, let's back up a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about your background and kind of what led you to being in a position to be able to launch a company like Showplace. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so in 2017, um, we were managing uh, 800 homes across 10 different markets in the United States. And at that point, we got approached by some pretty large brands who wanted to experiment with sampling with inside of Airbnb homes. Ah. And as a property manager, we were pretty well positioned to do it. But the one big problem is that as a property manager, you don't have the resources to actually execute the sampling opportunity that you can do inside of an Airbnb because there's a lot of care that goes into placing it for each reservation. The marketing has to be just right. So part of that learning that we took with us uh, in Showplace was that we primarily work with Airbnb super hosts and each of our hosts on average only have about three listings that they manage. So there's, there's a lot of attention that goes into the experience and we, we, we sort of over index on getting the experience just right uh, for each particular product in the home. Gotcha. So do you guys do outreach directly to Airbnb super hosts? Are you working uh, with Airbnb directly to contact these uh, hosts? So all of our hosts have basically found us organically through word of mouth. We have over 3,000 uh, Airbnb hosts in our network. And primarily they come to us because this is a win-win proposition. So they want to try interesting products and give interesting products to their guests. That creates a really unique experience. It differentiates them. And ultimately, they can build their brand and their business as an Airbnb operator. Mm -hmm. And then on the brand side, there's a lot of value in accessing this very new and differentiated set of inventory. We, we, so, we, we were the first to do this, and we curated what we think is the largest and best group of short-term rental operators around the country. And there's nothing easy uh, about building both sides of that marketplace, but that's sort of our core, uh, our core value. Okay, sure, I get that. Um, that would have been probably one of my next questions is, has anyone else picked up on this? Because to me, this seems like a really groundbreaking idea. So yeah. are you guys pretty much the, uh, the only ones out there doing this kind of product placement right now, as far as you guys know? So we definitely pioneered the concept, but over the last 18 months, there's a couple of competitors um, who are not far behind. And generally sure. speaking, I, I think that only goes to validate the space. Uh, you know, there's, there's a, as you know, there's a tremendous amount of sampling opportunities in the United States. And so we can't educate every brand on this new opportunity. So, so competition in general, we think of as a positive. Absolutely. And, you know, you guys have essentially kind of set the bar, if you will. Um, and I, I'm always of the opinion that the original and the originators are kind of the trendsetters. 
uh, when it comes down to it. Um, so, you know, when branded experiences do come back, uh, talk to us about how the event community can leverage Showplace uh, and help reinforce brand experiences. Yeah, so we've been experimenting, obviously, with a lot of different uh, pieces. I think the number one most clear value proposition, we think for the next 12 months, is that before branded events start happening, um, for us, we, we're wide open for business and we are seeing more travel than ever. So the first opportunity generally is that uh, there's an uptick in brands who've been reaching out to us for sampling. And then we think after, there's a really unique opportunity when brands are thinking about event sponsorships. So a lot of brands that we've talked to are generally priced out of being able to be a sponsor at some large events. Um, however, these events, let's say CES, they draw crowds from all over the country and not everyone is staying in a hotel. A lot of those guests who are attending the conference are staying in the Airbnbs in the surrounding area. Mm. And so one of our initiatives is basically doing a second tier type of sponsorship for the guests in the surrounding Airbnbs attending the CES conference. And so we think that we work hand in hand with larger events by having the secondary sponsorship opportunity. Sure, I mean, that's really quite a unique space to be able to be in because in a sense, you're, you're not even trying to contend with whatever's happening on site at, as you said, whether it's CES or a large conference type of event setup because, um, you know, people are now, even before COVID, people were utilizing Airbnb more and more uh, as time went on. Um, you know, it occurs to me, so now is it a thing where once you've identified a, a potential partner and a, and, a, and a super host, do you guys just ship all the products directly to them? Do they get to choose what products they want to showcase in their home? How does that process work? Yeah, so one of the things that I'm most excited about is the technology that basically underpins the entire marketplace. And so the way that it generally works is we'll do a deal with a brand, let's say a Muse mattress, for example. Mm. And once we work with them, we create their campaign in our system. And then from the host perspective, they will see all of the active campaigns currently available. So they'll see Muse mattress, uh, peach skin sheets, and some other deal, other things that we have in the area. We work both with durables and consumables. And the host will then apply to that campaign. So the application window will be open for a week or two. They'll apply to that campaign. And then the brand representative or the agency, depending on who we're working with, they'll basically be able to see who's indicated interest in this campaign. And we can sort on a lot of different filters and data, right? You want to see hosts in a certain area, uh, geographic locations. Well, we, we also look at price per night so we can get the demographic just right. If it, huh. is, it, is it for families? Are these large homes? Is it for urban areas or for millennials? And we can kind of look at the data and figure out what product is going to be best matched with that home. And then furthermore, once the product gets shipped, the host obviously receives a notification and then we do all of the work for compliance, right? So we, we work with the hosts and they're uploading photos that the product is getting placed for each reservation. So we know that's happening, social media and other pieces. And then just one thing I, I wanted to add, I think that's a big differentiation uh, of traditional sampling is that our efficacy of a given product sample, let's say it's bath soap, when we place that right in the bathroom, we know that it's being used right away. And that's, that, that's a very different proposition than if you just, in, in our opinion, if you're just handing out samples at a conference because they may or may not get used. And in our case, we know that the efficacy is quite high uh, when you sort of match the right time, like the, the product is put in the exact space that the guest is gonna be trying that. And in many times, uh, they sort of build those those really good relationships um, with the brand over time, and we see that converting to a lot of purchasing. Sure, I, I would imagine there's a lot of residual 
purchases, so to speak. Um, and something like that, that brings up an interesting question. Like, so if it's bath soap, you know, maybe someone's doing a, an extended stay. I would assume that kind of how your campaigns work is that if it's something like soap, the host will get a surplus of it so that they're able to restock it if they run out, right? Totally. Yeah. So the way we, our campaigns are typically done on a three, six, nine, or 12 month period of time. <clears throat> and so uh, the brands that we work with are either sending out product directly to the Airbnb host for placement, um, usually done in three month batches, or uh, we can work with, we have a fulfillment partner uh, that can help us do fulfillment as well. Very, very, very smart. They're very interesting. You know, and it's, 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 it's such an interesting time right now uh, in the event industry, or maybe the event culture is even a better way to describe it. Because what I feel like what Showplace is doing is showing that you can get out of the conventional event space and still be able to brand market and still be able to do sampling and still be able to let consumers connect with your brand and your product and your services. That's really... Um, I, I think brilliant, uh, Justin. Uh, now, you have a track record of founding successful companies. Uh, you mentioned uh, Pillow, uh, Notehall.com, and now Showplace, of course. Um, as an entrepreneur, especially you know up there in the uber competitive like Silicon Valley, um, talk to us what it takes and an idea to actually see it through, like to actually bring it to life. That's got to be quite a journey. Yeah, well, I, I think it takes a lot of grit. Uh, number one, and just because I've done it before and um, we've we've had success, it means absolutely nothing um, <laughs> because every time that you're at bat is just that it's it's a new at bat, uh, and the journey is just as difficult. So um, I think grit comes to mind, and there's a lot of failure that happens, and so we we obviously we have a culture here at Showplace where failure is a good thing. Um, we want to fail because it means that we're moving quickly. We obviously want to learn from these failures and we don't want to repeat them, but we think uh, our, our sort of early indicators are optimizing for a great client experience at the same time as we're optimizing for learnings. Like learnings are the currency uh, of most value. Uh, we, generally speaking, we have a great investor, um, who Adam Draper, who runs Boost VC, he was an investor in my previous company. And that is, I think, another important, important and crucial aspect is to align yourselves with investors who understand, hey, this could be a 10 year journey. And so we're like in the first or second inning of that journey. Um, and it's going to take a lot of time. But we feel that there's something really valuable on what we're building the network the time of this like you're saying with events um and ultimately with experiential uh sampling like ex experience like i think consumers are moving in an an experiential culture where you have to experience something a lot of the direct to consumer e-commerce only stuff um generally is not going to resonate with that next generation of consumer uh and it's a tremendous it's a super interesting um, anecdotal data that we get on a daily basis, which are people staying in Airbnbs all around the country are trying interesting products that they've never tried before. And now they can't live without them. So they end up purchasing. Them. And like, it's, it's, it's actually a very simple business um, for us, but everything is obviously in the details and in the execution. That's, it's really interesting to me because, um, I'm thinking about this as you're talking about it. And, you know, as opposed to even having to interact with a brand ambassador or someone that's essentially almost sort of pitching you on something, you're left to just be in your own time and, oh, I really like this hand soap or this bed's really comfortable. You know, it's, it's really, I, I think, a brilliant, uh, a brilliant idea, Justin. Um, Okay, so what I like to do uh, at the, uh, as we get towards the end of our interviews is I always like to get off the track a little bit. And as, of course, this has been an unprecedented time, and granted, you guys have been busy. Um, has there been anything during the pandemic that you have been able to occupy yourself with? A new hobby? Do you like to cook? Do you like to uh, whatever it might be? Uh, what, is, what has Justin Miller been spending his time doing when you're not 
show placing. <laughs> So yeah, the other one hour a day that I'm not working. <laughs> when, you're, when you're not at work and not sleeping. <laughs> uh, so we, my wife and I, uh, we recently got a new puppy about six months ago. Oh. And I didn't, I didn't know that I was a dog person until I got a new puppy. And I've been absolutely just in love with having a dog at home. And so I've been going on, on dog walks, have been oh, an, amazing, yeah. an amazing part. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just in love now with, with this little, it's a Labradoodle. And, a Labradoodle. Uh, the, what's, the, what's the he or she's name? Uh, her name is Penny Lane. Penny Lane. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. I am a, I'm a cat dad myself. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have twin Siamese cats, Linus and Lucy, their brother and sister. And uh, I, I am personally single and, and, and live alone. And they have literally been my my sanity through all of this craziness with COVID. So um, that's that's wonderful. I really think that's really great. Uh, you know, there's I always say this to people, but uh, espe especially in these crazy times, like pets can enrich our lives in ways that you've never imagined if you haven't ever taken that journey. And uh, for all of you listening out there, you know, ad adopt a, a dog or a cat, and not only save a life but enrich your own. Justin, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to come on to Event Speak. Um, please, anytime you want to come back, we'd love to have you. Uh, for those of you that are watching out there and want to find out more about Showplace, that's showplacehq.com. You can find out all you'd ever wanted to know about Showplace and Justin uh, Miller. Justin, thank you again. And uh, I've been enjoying talking with you. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And to everybody out there, uh, I'd like to say thanks again for tuning in. Um, you can find us, of course, on eventspeak.com. That's www.eventspeak.com. I'm still Big John, and signing off for today, wishing you guys well. And as always, be sure to take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.